This is our power cords drailer system. It's designed with a four millimeter housing. It's one of the best uh, systems in the world. We'll go ahead and open it up and pull out the different contents. Just take it and slide it all the way out. Got some power cord stickers, instruction sheets. Here's the ferrules for the four millimeter system. It comes with a barrel adjuster. Then we have our power cords and our housing. And with these products, we'll go ahead and show how we can quickly install them on our uh, high end mountain bikes or road bikes or whichever bikes you want. They're compatible with uh, Shimano, Campanola, and SRAM. Um, the drailers are compatible all the way across with most components. All right, let's go install them. Okay, so the tools that we're going to use to install the power cords are fairly common. Um, we're going to use a, a cable cutter uh, used to go ahead and cut your cables. And then we have an, a, an owl to go ahead and clean out the inside and make sure that uh, everything is cleaned out. Um, we have some rock and roll lube. We want to make sure we use uh, lubrication in our system. And a uh, little technique is go ahead and put, maybe put a little lube on the outside. Move it around and so that my ferrules can slide on nice and easy. It's a little technique. And then we'll use a five millimeter Allen wrench. Um, it could, you could also use a four millimeter depending on your system. The 11 millimeter wrench will be only used on uh, mountain bike V brakes and it's where the clasp, if we're going to tie the clasp, it's a, if it's the 11 millimeters. Um, that'll probably be the only wrench that we'll use. And then either to cut the cord at, when we're done at the end, we can use an X-Acto blade or you can also use the, the ca a cable cutter. And those are all the tools you need to go ahead and do a quick install of the power cords on any bike. Okay, we're going to go ahead and install the trailer cords into the mountain bike shifting pods. We like to use the 1.2 millimeter cord. Um, the cords sometimes have a natural curve to them. I always like to sometimes straighten them out so that they're nice and straight. Put my shifting pod all the way in the shifter and then just push it right through. I'm going to go ahead and pull the cord all the way through. And then I'll shift it a couple times to make sure everything is working. Okay. And I'll grab my housing. Yeah, so I want to have a nice clean cut. If there's any of the fibers, take an exacto blade and go ahead and cut that sharp. So then when you go to feed it in, there's nothing going to get caught. Should move nice and easily through the whole thing. Should be no friction or very little friction since there's friction on everything. And we just go ahead and run it in. Come over. Set it into here. So that's the first part there. Now we're going to go ahead and we got our housing and cords up to this point. And we'll go ahead and put the cord in the housing for the second, the last piece. Feed it through, slide it in position, and this little piece will loop through here and go through the rear trailer. Drop that guy on. One of the techniques that I like to do is to move the chain up into the third chain ring a little bit. And I can do that by pushing my thumb here and pedaling and just allow the chain to move up to the third ring a little bit. My barrel adjuster, I'm going to probably drop down, I'm going to back it off just a little bit, maybe two turns. I want to make sure that I double check my shifter, shifting pod up in the front to make sure that it's in the lowest gear. So I'm going to follow the same path that the cord makes on the component. If it's a Shimano or a SRAM, the cord may go underneath or it may go over top. You want to follow the same path that it's designed for. 
Okay, so I'm going to run my cord and one of the things I want to do is I'm going to shift it a couple times just to make sure that uh, to help seat the ferrules, make sure everything is seated. Then I'll go ahead and I'll loop it around and, so, and, I'll, and then I'll go ahead and shift it again. It'll put a little bit more load and just go ahead now that I'm going to back it off. Okay, now it's ready to seat. So I'll grab my wrench. What I'll do is I'll run the cord in the same path it is. I'm going to just pull it back 180 degrees. Sometimes if you want to, I can pull it back this way here just so I can grab onto it and pull it. I position 